Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, and I make mental health education videos. There's been recent studies showing that a ketogenic diet improves psychotic symptoms in people with schizophrenia. In a previous video that I did, I talk about how the Mediterranean diet is being shown to improve depression. And I have a link to that video in the corner and in the description. The ketogenic diet and Mediterranean diet couldn't be more different, but they are addressing different problems which then leads to the question, what is it about schizophrenia that makes this specific diet more helpful? We don't have a clear understanding of what causes schizophrenia. The fact that this diet helps though, and how it helps, gives us more information about what goes wrong in the brain that causes schizophrenia. I explain schizophrenia in this video and you can watch it after this one. I'll also have a link in the description. First, I'll explain what the ketogenic diet is, and then I'll explain how it was shown to help the brains of people with schizophrenia. The ketogenic diet is a high fat, low carbohydrate diet. Normally, your body uses carbohydrates to burn energy. The carbohydrates are broken down into the simple sugar glucose. Your brain especially needs glucose, and that's why if your sugar levels drop for whatever reason, like you didn't eat for an entire day and then you go on a run, a sign of your glucose being low is becoming lightheaded or losing consciousness. When you restrict how much carbohydrates you eat, your body will turn to fat as your fuel source. So your liver will take the fat and break it down into fatty acids that are converted to ketone bodies. These ketone bodies then become the fuel source instead of glucose. When you have elevated ketone bodies in your blood, you're considered to be in a state of ketosis. So this is where the name ketogenic diet comes from. Ketosis is not the same as ketoacidosis. Ketoacidosis is a dangerous metabolic state that we usually see in people with diabetes. In this scenario, you're producing ketone bodies in an uncontrolled way. What normally happens is when you produce ketones, you simultaneously produce small amounts of insulin that cause glucose to be produced from other sources in your body. We call this basal insulin secretion. It works in the background to keep you from completely depleting your glucose stores. But in people with type 1 diabetes and some people with type 2, type 2 diabetes who require insulin, they lose the ability to produce that minimal acceptable level of glucose in the body. In that case, once you trigger the production of ketone bodies, it's like an avalanche of ketones that overwhelm the body and put the person in a state of metabolic acidosis because ketones are acidic. Ketosis from carbohydrate restriction doesn't lead to ketoacidosis in someone who has normal insulin production. The ketogenic diet can help with blood sugar control in people with diabetes, but you have to be careful and should talk with your doctor about whether or not it's a good idea for you to follow. It may be that you do a modified form of it. This diet is not new. It's been studied in other conditions like seizure disorder, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease and others. It also has become a popular lifestyle diet because of the fat burning mechanism that causes a lot of weight loss. Here's an example of what a day in the life um, can look like eating a keto diet. For breakfast, you could have scrambled eggs and a cream sauce with bacon. Lunch could be a chicken breast with sliced avocado and broccoli with butter. And for dinner, you could have salmon and a lemon cream sauce, salad greens with high fat dressing. Here's what we understand so far about what happens in the brain of a person with schizophrenia. We believe that it's related to three things, abnormal energy metabolism of the neurons, abnormal function of the mitochondria, and mitochondria is an organelle inside of your cell that acts like a power station. And the third contributor is oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is damage to the cells at the gene level from free radicals. Lots of things that we do eat and are exposed to create excess free radicals that cause oxidative stress. And this is where consuming antioxidants are helpful. 
Your brain relies heavily on glucose to function, but with schizophrenia, the neurons don't process glucose properly. Then you get abnormal communication between the neurons. We call this impaired synaptic activity. The synapse is a gap between the cells. Think of the cells as an engine that's choking or sputtering because it doesn't have enough fuel. Because the ketogenic diet provides another source of fuel for the brain, it restores the metabolic activity of the cells so that they function in the way that they're supposed to. So in our analogy, the engine stops choking and runs smoothly. The evidence that we have on the ketogenic diet is several case studies. We still don't have any randomized controlled studies testing groups of people with schizophrenia with the diet and see who does better. Randomized control studies are the highest level of evidence that we look for to conclude that a finding is valid and reproducible. So we're not there yet as far as seeing this as a definite intervention for schizophrenia, but we're getting there. It's still a positive thing to see because not only can the diet improve symptoms, but it can also improve the weight gain that comes with the medications we prescribe to treat the symptoms. So that's a twofold benefit. It's not an easy diet to follow though, and it takes a lot of discipline, but it's something to look into as a non-medication option to benefit schizophrenia. If you wanna know more about schizophrenia, watch this video. See you next time.